Welcome back to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. It is draw seven action at the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship. There is the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center, which is hosting this week's championship, bringing 14 teams from across the country chasing a national championship. And we've got a great Tuesday afternoon game here, draw eight. My name is Al Cameron, joined today by Clint Thierman, and we will watch two teams at the top of the standings in Pool A. It will be Quebec's team Felix Asselin taking on British Columbia's team's My team Miles Craig. And we'll run down the lineups very quickly as we get set for the first end. Team Quebec will have Last Rock. Team British Columbia playing out of the Victoria and Duncan curling clubs. They are skipped by Miles Craig. The vice skip is Steph Jackson Bayer. The second is Chris Bear, and the lead is Carly Sandwith Craig. And yes, that is two husband and wife combinations, Miles and Carly, and Steph and Chris. They are taking on Team Quebec, skipped by Felix Esselin. They are playing out of the Glenmore Curling Club in Dollard des Armaux, which is a suburb of Montreal. The skip is Felix Esselin. The vice skip, his girlfriend, Laurie Saint-Georges. Five, six is good. Emile Asselin is throwing fourth and sweeping and lead is Emily Riley and they do have a coach here, Michelle St. George, who is Laurie's dad. So we are underway here in the first end and that rock thrown by Carly Sandwith Craig will drift through the ring so Team Quebec will go on the offensive and Felix will call that Corner guard for lead, Emily Riley. Joined today, as mentioned, by Clint Thierman. And Clint, this should be a pretty fascinating game. Two teams that need wins to stay near the top of the standings and get into that crossover pool for the championship pool. Uh, for sure, Al. Uh, we're actually we're very uh, blessed to be able to watch two very good teams. Very good records. Uh, but it's a long week, and I've, I'm sure they're both going to try to improve on their records uh, and get out of the pool and, and go further. So uh, they're good teams. They can play, you know, any kind of game. But I think with Rocks in play, they've, they're going to have to be aggressive and uh, go after the other team. Quebec, we mentioned they've got a perfect 3-0 record coming into this game. Quebec with wins over Nunavut, 7-1 and then followed up with a win over Alberta, 10-3, and then 8-2 over Saskatchewan. Team BC, meanwhile, they opened with a forfeit win over the Yukon as they had travel issues getting here. They lost to Nunavut, 6-4, but then came back very strongly this morning with a 9-2 win over Grant Odishaw's New Brunswick team that had an unbeaten record before that game. So both teams carrying some momentum into this game. Oh, for sure. This is Emily Riley, the lead for Team Quebec. Worth noting that uh, both Emily and Laurie have experience here in Prince George, Prince Albert, pardon me. They were members of Team Quebec that played in the 2019 New Holland Canadian Junior Championships that were staged here in Prince Albert, both here at the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center as well as at the Art Hauser Center. And if I remember, that was a very cold week. Oh. I think we can say that from pretty well November to April here, can't we, Cliff? But well, yes, that was a very cold and windy not, week. It's not always this, that cold, but that was a cold week. Just and, when I'm in town, apparently. And this is a snowy week. There so, you go. Yeah. That uh, Quebec team skipped by Laurie with her sister Cynthia at second, Emily at second. T-line. They finished with a 5-1 record in the round robin, the early round robin, then moved into the championship pool. And made it to a tiebreaker and would lose the tiebreaker to British Columbia, so they finished fourth at that 2019 Canadian Juniors. So the hit and roll call for Emile Asselin, who is Felix's younger brother. Felix and uh, Emile played together at a lot of Canadian juniors themselves, representing Quebec. That may be a little tight. Emile is actually throwing second. It, uh, we had it on the roster as him throwing fourth, but it is in fact Felix throwing skip rocks.
And this is Chris Byer, the second for Team British Clean. Columbia. Clean. Close. Yep. 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 It's Team BC off to a good start, sitting a pair. and Emily working on this. See if they can get a little flop behind that stone. Very nice. Good weight control, great sweeping. So Steph Jackson Bear. The short Close. raise take out. Close. Close. No stranger Close. to playing Close. at national championships. Girl. Steph played Girl. at five Canadian junior Girl. championships representing BC. Going, Trying going, to see if they can that, around, get that to come around. across and it will just go over top, but they will hold the shooter at the top of the 12 foot. I guess we hit it. We could play that. Should run good there. So Felix is choosing to hit and roll rather than draw behind the corner. You see that camouflage sleeve that uh, Lori is wearing, and Emil is wearing one too, as is Emily. Team calls themselves Team Camo, as in Team Camouflage, because you won't see them coming. Now, once upon a time, that might have been true, and people didn't know an awful lot about this group of fourth area talented players, but uh, everybody sees them coming now. This is a very, very talented team. Laurie, a former Canadian Juniors silver medalist, and she and Felix, one of the top five mixed doubles combinations in the country as well. Of course, we've seen uh, Laurie at the Scotties as well. So. That's correct. And Felix has played at a briar or two, so yeah, no shortage of experience on this team. Now he splits. Yeah. Right here. Speedy, I've always wanted to see them. Speed's good. Line's a little tight. Line's good. Okay. Line to be even. Okay, lock it on. Line's good. Top four. Top four only. Top four. Laurie St. George. Line's good. Chance to draw in and sit a couple with the last rock. Just a wing. Just a knee. That's fine. It's curling. Who it's said? Really curling. They close him. They close. Whoa. D line. Pretty good D line there. Yeah, curl, 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 curl. And there again, we are seeing a lot more movement in the ice today. Yeah, there's a lot of swing. Drew Horchuk, the chief ice technician for the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center, talking to him earlier. They did change a little bit of the pebbling pattern and the pebbling size and that has definitely paid off with a lot more movement than we saw earlier in the week here. Well, I think that's what the curlers want. They want some movement. Ten. Ten. Clean. Whoa. Clean. Clean. Yep. Miles yep. Craig. Yep. Right to it, Chris. Hard. Whoa. Whoa. Clean. Whoa. 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 That'll roll over a little sideways, but it is still, and it'll be shot rock, so it will be an open hit here for Felix S. And A. Yeah, I 
Stay close on this. Felix calling on Emil to see if he can get this to carve a little bit, but good weight control, so very nice. A nine, like probably just outside middle of rock. Try and roll across the house to the back gate. At least if we make him throw the other turn, it's like a little bit harder, like. <laughs> There's a thought process from Miles. <laughs> It's going to take a miss, obviously, to prevent giving up two here, but they yeah. see if they can increase the odds of a miss by changing up oh, for sure. Felix's yeah. last shot. Playing the clockwise rotation. If they can get a little bit of a roll here, we'll roll the other way, and it will be a draw for two for Felix S. Lamp. Full 12 is all he needs. That's what a skip always wants, is a free draw in the first end. Oh, there's nothing free about it, my friend. <laughs> open, maybe. An open. They got to work for it, though. But a nice situation and a well-managed deuce for Quebec to open this game if they can uh, drag this into the rings. be good to put two on the board. Great start for Team Asselin and Team Quebec. They will score two in this first end and BC will have hammer when we come back right after this. Albert Golf and Curling Center. It is draw seven action at the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship Tuesday afternoon. And it is a great start for Quebec and Team Asselin as they get a first end deuce. British Columbia will have last rock in this second end. Yeah, Quebec's calling this one in right to the forefoot. And I would, uh, I would think that uh, Miles will go, go up with a corner guard or... It will be the corner being called for Carly Sandwith Craig. That is Miles' wife. She's 30 years old and she's a project coordinator at Kinsol Timber Systems. Need help? Halfway. Member of the 2014 BC Champions, BC Women's Champions. They, she and Stephanie were a member of the Kessa Van Osh team that went to the 2014 Scotties in Montreal. Try and get real tight. If it slips in, it's fine. Play guard. No. Here's Emily Riley. She's 25. She's a mental performance cons. <coughs> Pardon me, she's a mental performance consultant working in sports psychology. She works with a lot of young athletes, including some young curling teams. But here's the coolest, well, that's cool. But here's one of the coolest things about Emily. 
she has played the violin since she was a kid, and her dad has a well-known band in Montreal called the Life of the Life of Riley Band, which is great in and of itself. And her grandmother was in the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, and she plays her grandmother's violin. So that's pretty cool. Mm, it's a talented musical family. Top of the foot. Two great shots there by Emily Riley. Now the call is for Carly to see if she can plant one on top of that Quebec shot stone at the top button. Both these teams yep. seem to have a pretty good idea of draw yep, weight to start it out to yep, Clint. That's a good sign. Oh, for Hard sure, line. yes. Hard Just watching them in warm-up, they were uh, putting ro rocks right where they Hard. wanted them. And it's just as soon as we say that. <laughs> a little light on that one. And that's uh, that's trouble. That's the staggered center guard to protect yeah. the Quebec shot stone. Yeah, that stagger isn't going to be in their favor. Here's Emile Asselin. He, is, he turns 26 next week. Uh, studied as a physical therapist, but now currently employed working for Curling Quebec hey, as the director of competitions. So, obviously, he knows his competitive background. This certainly plays a role in that job. Laurie and Emily trying to drag this in. Hide it a bit. Great sweeping by Laurie St. George. I think it's still there, though. Three quarters. Okay. Three quarters is pretty close. You like that or the double peel? Three quarters probably makes sense if you want that one. Okay. Probably like a third. Looks like the double like peel is going to be the call here. Yeah, I'm try to clean that front up a bit. Chris Beyer, he's 35. He's the service manager and a technician for Uptown H HVAC Refrigeration. Yep. And uh, one of the numerous junior age players in Victoria that were coached and influenced by the legendary Gordon Huey. Okay. People on Vancouver Island will tell you a lot of things about how Gordon influenced so many young careers in the 80s and 90s at the, at the Victoria Curling Club. So this is a big opportunity now for Quebec. Yeah, that double peel didn't work out the way they wanted. And you know, you talk about this Quebec team. Quebec curling has, uh, particularly at the mixed level, they've won the last two Canadian mixed championships. Jean-Michel Menard won a gold medal at the World Mixed last week in his team. And Quebec trying to make history is the first time since 1931 that one province or territory has won the same Canadian championship three years in a row with three completely different lineups. It's only happened once before in Canadian curling history, 1929, 1930, and 1931. Briar champions from Manitoba, three completely different teams. So chance to make history here for Team Asselin. Well, it certainly does show the depth of curling in Quebec. Line's good. Line's good. Room right now. Room. Whoa. Whoa. Steps in. Steps in. Step. Step. Go. Step. Go. Great opportunity here. Just bounce out a little into the open. Just to make it just a little bit heavy. Can't wait. This through. Yeah. The roll is plus important than sortir la rouge. Okay. Just through. Laurie St. George now. She's skipped Quebec at the last two Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. Had with Emily Riley playing second on that team. Laurie is 25 and she works in administration for the ANA group, which is involved in uh, printing. She's also a journalism student at the University of Quebec de Montreal. Emile 
Emil trying to get this across and see if they can get the little inside roll. Could not get the movement. A chance maybe for the double and roll for British Columbia. Like three quarters, roll under. Yeah, it's maybe a little straighter spot because the rocks definitely are not moving like they were. Stephanie Jackson Byer, she's 36 years old. Five-time provincial junior champion in British Columbia. Whoa, straight, straight, straight. There's the hit, the double, and the roll. Will it roll too far? Or will it hang on just on the outside? So Quebec still shot rock, but here's the double made by Stephanie. Curls another inch, and that is a wonderful shot. Still a great shot, but a chance now for Laurie St. George to get one behind that pile. Another fun fact about Laurie, by the way, she was a co competitive dancer until she was 16. Various styles of dance, but uh, that speaks to body awareness and uh, being able to just move your body in different ways, and that helps out on a sheet of curling ice. Emil does carve that into the button, and that's. That's in jail. Back four. You want to talk curling bloodlines? My goodness, Stephanie, her dad, Glenn. Very famous curler in his own right back in the day. Carly's in. Play for the freeze. Won the World Juniors with Paul Gausel, a two-time participant at the Briar. Her mom, Elaine Dag Jackson, a colleague of mine at Curling Canada. She is our national women's team program manager and has coached and participated in just about every event you can think of. And her uncle, Keith Dag, was the chair of the 2005 and 2013 World no, Curling Championships in Victoria. And her grandfather, Lyle Dagg, former Briar and World Men's Champion in 1964. So the Jackson family in Victoria, just a wonderful group of people, wonderful group of, per of curlers, and uh, so supportive of this curling community in British Columbia, on Vancouver Island, and across Canada. So it still is Quebec shot rock, and what are the options here? Well, I think he's pretty well just got to try to protect it. If he can do, put a good guard on, he, he could steal a point. BC had to move that rock a bit and, and get shot rock. No, 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 no. Let it stop. Just, just hope it stops, Higher the better is what Felix is saying. You like the straight back on the yellow with just like normal? Yeah. Yeah, I just, yeah. Probably like a tennis. Yeah. I think like a 10. Basically, we're almost trying to hit it as low, like just a hair low, like. Should be, should be curl too much. Looks like Miles will take on the run back. Miles is 38. He works for the Cowichan Valley Regional District as a okay. maintenance ice just maker. Like a sliver low. Avid hiker. And does a lot of traveling in Europe. He was telling me he's actually curled at some events already this year in Denmark and the Czech Republic, which is pretty cool. And again, you want to talk bloodlines. Uh, his parents, Wes and Roslyn, very, very accomplished curlers. Wes has won five BC Seniors Championships. His mom, Roslyn, is a two-time World Seniors Champion and also has uh, won a Canadian Masters Championship. Miles curled with uh, 
Wes at the uh, Canadian Mixed in 2014 and 2016 as well. But the first time skipping here for Miles. Oh, what a shot. Tremendous shot. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, very cool. Couldn't have made that any better. Miles Craig. I was running the opposition rock in, too. That's always a risk. That, uh... So it is BC sitting shot, but it is open for Felix Asselin to sit, too. Yeah, roll either way is going to make it. Uh, BC is going to have to navigate the port to get their one. Felix, by the way, he's 28. He's the old guy on this team at 28. He's a full-time geologist for Goldmine in Val d'Or, Quebec, for West Dome. He's been working there since 2020. He's a scratch golfer, too. Trying to get the roll. That's pretty good. That is good, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, BC's going to have to draw. Yep. Through the hole and half into the forefoot will get the job done, but uh, a nervy shot to take on here in the second end. It's probably the best option. We've seen it a few times. Yeah. Give it like a broom mark. Yeah. So what do you want to see, 80? 85? A little more. Trying to make this curl because it's still on one of the guards right now. That's going to have to curl in an awful hurry. It's coming on, no. And Not it, enough. That rock stayed straight. So it will be a steal of two for Quebec, and they will take a 4 nothing lead into the third end when we come back right after this. Saskatchewan is cold. So cold that you'll often hear locals ask each other, is it cold enough for you? The bold and brave, they'll already know the answer to this question. Saskatchewan is cold enough. Cold enough to cover our land with new possibilities, to freeze time and place and create long-lasting memories. Cold enough to make us appreciate the warmth of others and bring our communities even closer together. Saskatchewan, cold enough. Welcome back to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center as we go into the third end of this afternoon's feature game between BC and Quebec. And Quebec coming off a steal of two in that second end and uh, really a, just a, a wonderful example of rock placement and the importance of it, Clint. Oh, for sure, you know. It's important for Felix to get a little flip either way, either right or left, and it's gonna leave uh, Miles with a very, very difficult shot. and. His rock just uh, failed to curl. I think his weight was fine, but that uh, was a big turnaround. That was a big three-point swing there. So. Absolutely, and it is a 4 nothing lead for Quebec as they look to improve to 4-0 here at the 2022 Canadian Mixed. Four games on the ice this afternoon at the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Centre. We'll give you a quick look at the other three games. It is Saskatchewan's team, Sean Meacham, playing out of Swift Current. They're up into a 4-1 lead over Team None of It, Peter Mackey's team from Iqaluit. 4-1 for Saskatchewan as they play the third end. And uh, Saskatchewan opened that game with four in the first end, None of It with one in the second. The other games on the ice, we have Prince Edward Island 
the Dennis Watts team from Summerside. They are taking on the Northwest Territories team, skipped by Jamie Cooey. And the Territory is looking to improve to 3-0, and and they took a deuce in the first end. We'll see the score posted for the second hit here momentarily, but uh, the Northwest Territories looking to improve to 3-0. and And in the other game on the ice this afternoon, it is Nova Scotia's team, Paul Fleming, looking to rebound from taking their first loss earlier today, and they open with a deuce in the first end against Manitoba's team, Corey Chambers, from Miami. Manitoba. Always have to add the Manitoba after Miami, just so there's no <laughs> confusion. It's, exactly. It's the yeah. Miami Manitoba, not Miami, Florida. Yeah, Miami, Florida sounds pretty good today. <laughs> we can tell you that Manitoba <laughs> did blank the second end over there, so it is Manitoba with hammer in the third end, trailing two nothing. And in the Northwest Territories Prince Edward Island game, uh, the Territories, we can tell you, stole one in the second end, so they are now up 3 nothing on PEI. You can get all the scores all the time on curling.ca slash scoreboard. That's curling.ca slash scoreboard. And as a look back on our feature sheet, Clint, well, yeah, there see. it is again. Quebec in control. Well, I know uh, BC's got their, their double corner guards, but uh, Quebec's doing a very good job of not letting them use them, so... Uh, they're going to have to come to the center before they can get to the side, so we'll see. Okay, yeah, freeze is good. Line's a little tight, yep. Yep. Yep! Hard! 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 Keep going, keep going, keep going. You're playing it off By the one of the guards. Roll, roll, I don't know if they'll get by the second one, but. It's a little rub. He and Felix played together at two Canadian Junior Championships in 2016 and 2015. But Felix actually won the Quebec Juniors four times. 2012, 2013, 2015, and 2016. Well, most of the competitive curlers today had very successful junior careers. And Gained lots of experience. Overwhelming memory of uh, Felix, obviously, for me, will be at the Juniors in Stratford. Uh, they have a social room with a ping pong table. That was Stratford, Ontario. There's a, always a ping pong table, and he was playing one night and dislocated his shoulder playing ping pong. And he had to have a, a brace that had kept his arm close to his uh, body, and he was skipping and curling basically with one arm useless. He couldn't sweep. But uh, he was still out there making shots, as you expect from Felix Asselin. That was a good, uh, a good hit and roll in behind, so it changes this end. And Lori, she uh, she won three Quebec Junior titles as a skip. 2019, 2018, 2016. 2019, as mentioned, is here in Prince Albert. Her Quebec team played twice here at the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. And according to Lori and Emily, they lost them both. <laughs> so they preferred against, the Art Hauser. Yeah, well, against two very good teams, though. Caitlin Jones of Nova Scotia and Mackenzie Zacharias of Manitoba, who... Both just happen to be world junior champions. You want to do that? I don't mind it. 
So a chance to remove both of those stones for BC. Steph Jackson Byer. Yeah, you hate to be removing stones uh, you know, when you're four down, but he really doesn't have any choice. Whoa, whoa. Just clean, yeah, clean, clean. Good. Will that stay in the rings for Quebec? Or for BC, pardon me, that is uh, just behind the T line and spinning. All right, just play that. So, Can't wait for BC that sitting a couple in there. Three rocks in the rings, one lonely Quebec stone. So. Yeah. May soon disappear. And let's change that around. I'm confusing my cherries and my no. bananas here. It is Quebec with yellow, so they've got three in there. And Laurie will be called upon to make the short raise takeout to remove the only BC stone. It's been a long week. But yes, I imagine it has. <laughs> well, we're not even not even halfway. So. Oh, 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 you're killing me, Clint. Yes, yes. <laughs> And to keep that straight as Emil. Oh, very nice. Perfect. And Quebec is sitting four. Well, you get like this. There's really no right call, I guess. But that last shot, Clint, I think that was a perfect example of a team shot. Well thrown, well swept, well well called. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, they got the most out of it. <laughs> yeah. Trying to keep this on line, and it will hit and roll. Pretty nice, and I think that is sitting for second. Uh, yes, second shot. It is a short raise, but to hit it on an angle, he could roll out. But I don't think he'll be unhappy if he loses his own. Yep, go! Oh. Yep! Yeah! Oh. Oh. Like that, but it will only leave one. Well, I think there's still two for Quebec sitting in the rings. Can't quite see the one that's yeah, at the top to 12. See. Yeah, it's on. So Quebec sitting two. Still a chance for a hit and roll here for BC, and if they could get the roll behind the corner. Yeah, maybe those those two <laughs> corners will come into play. You'd never yeah. know. Yeah. This would draw around the middle, but I think I like this. about half half behind
Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Should curl a bit here, I think. I, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's half rock the roll. So. Yep. 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 Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. So they're discussing the roll. Obviously, the main job here, though, Clint, is make that BC rock go away. Yeah. If he sticks around, that's good. He's going to get force BC to one. But if he doesn't, that's okay too. Just Emily Riley trying to get it by that guard. I think he's by. Just by. My goodness. Oh, what a great shot. Big board. 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 Hung out there forever, didn't it? Though, yeah. So perfect weight, I guess. But that was a big point. It certainly is. So it will be one on the scoreboard for Team BC. But Quebec will have a 4-1 lead and last rock when we come back for the fourth end right after this. Albert Golf and Curling Center. Tuesday afternoon action, draw seven at the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship, and it is BC getting on the scoreboard. They take a single in that third end, so Quebec will have last rock advantage here in the fourth. BC trying to generate some rocks in place, so they'll put the center guard up, and Quebec will try and neutralize it right away by coming around, and Emily Riley's draw weight has been on point this game. And that really dictates the end, doesn't it? Oh, it does. If you can make those draws, and that, it really forces the opposition to make some great shots. So, uh, but I think BC's got to be all in here. They, it's an end. They've got to go for it. Get lots of rocks in play. Try to get a steal. From a technical standpoint, I don't think I'm out of line saying that this Quebec team probably the best sweeping team in the event. Uh, obviously great training, great technique. All four players up and down the lineup. For sure. Yeah, they're nice to watch. And certainly having that championship experience up and down the lineup. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention coaching at some point. Michelle St. George here, and I can tell you already that this trip to Prince Albert's going a lot better for Michelle than the last time it did, 2019. I always remember he uh, suffered a detached retina Did he? during that event. Had to have emergency surgery to repair it, and he was coaching wearing some kind of device on his neck that caused his, he had to lean his head to one side oh, just to yes, help the I eye. remember that, yeah. yeah. And on top of that, he couldn't get home, he couldn't fly home because you had to keep it, you couldn't go up at a certain altitude to help the eye repair. So he was gonna take the train home, but then <laughs> there was a train derailment in Saskatoon. Oh, yeah that got in the way of that, so it was quite an adventure in Prince Albert for Michelle St. George in 2019. He might have had some PTSD coming back here, but uh, so far he's enjoyed what he's seen out of this young Quebec team, 3-0, and leading their pool at the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship. 
and in control of this game as good well. Throwing. Yeah, they look very strong. And like I say, the sweeping is, is good, and that gives the, uh, the throwers a lot of confidence. <laughs> And I might suggest that uh, at some point during this week they put some good music out on the ice surface for the pregame practice okay. because Life's Michelle's good. been known Back to bust a move <laughs> dancing out there. It's good. Stay close, Steph. Close. Line's really good. Close. Yep, go, Gaston. Yep. Curl, curl, curl. It's a nice looking draw from Chris Beyer. Oh, very nice. Go, 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 go. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going. But it will be exposed for Emile Asselin. Yeah, I think he'll play this tight. If he happens to get the guard, that's, he won't be unhappy with that. Oh, oh. Let's go. Yeah, tight guard. Oh. He said that. I think he's a little outside. Here it comes. By one guard, by their own, oh, oh, just rubs on their own. Missed the line call by half a second there. Yeah, they just had to wait on it a bit. So maybe, maybe an opening for Team BC. Yeah, that's, they haven't had very many openings. So. Chris Beyer. Good. Close line. Line's good. Four if you can. 2004 Canadian, uh, BC Junior Men's Champion. Curl, curl. Curl. Skipped a team out of Victoria. Curl, got a barrier piece. Yep. Yep, keep going as far as you can go. Competed on home yep, ice in Victoria that year at the Wanda yep, yep, Fuga yep, Rec yep, Center. Yep, posted yep. a 6-6 six and six record. Pretty good field that year. Among others, you had um, John Epping skipping Ontario, Brett Gallant skip, uh, skipping Prince Edward Island, Martin Cret skipping BC, so lots of experience in that event. Still think that's the shot. Even if it flats here, we've got no guards, it's fine. Look at that. I mean, we just want to score, right? Yeah. Even if we play here, they got no more guard, it's not bad. This is open and Shot. Looks like he's going to try the double peel. Maybe not a call you'd do in a game that uh, was a one-point game, but no, up three with hammer. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Ah! Ah! Things happen. <laughs> yeah, that certainly changes the complexion of this end. You want to go high? Mentioned Quebec having won the last two Canadian Mixed Championships. BC has not won at this event since 1985, which is a ridiculously long time when you think about it. That was 1985. A team from Victoria won uh, with Steve Skillings, two-time uh, two Scottish champion Pat Sanders is on that team, and Al Carlson and Louise Herlinburg. I won at Toronto in 1985. Yeah, we can play this. Carly's in. Carly's in for sure. Carly's in. Okay, close then. Carly, go. Carly, go. Coming down. Coming down. Coming down. Got to get a piece under the yellow then. Just trying to freeze that on. He wanted to hook it a little bit there. Yeah. All right, let's get match AC. Neil lining up the angles. Walk out. Double is certainly there, Clint. It is for sure. That little less weight, and you could have hooked it on that that yellow. It would have been a great shot. But as it is, it's it's open, and the double is there. They still have to be made, but. Yeah. 
Just over curled by a hair. Yeah. Now the double right back potentially for Steph. Right. It's in four, but. What a half rock. Might jam on that uh, side red yeah. one, but. Pretty close. Nice shot. What a great shot. Just like that. Well, that's an like opening and I think you heard earlier in the end, though. Quebec said they they would like to score this end, even if it's one, just to score in the even ends. Even ends is huge, you know, and that was the, that's their objective. They don't need two; they just want to score. Hard not to make a double. You haven't seen me play. <laughs> I don't like. I don't mind trying it. Okay, if you like it? It's definitely there. It's definitely, definitely there. Not scared it's of what, like, it's, like a half? Yeah, that's the back of that. You're making a triple. Okay. Like a, no, I think this is the best shot. Half is maybe a thin half. Our priority is to make two go away somehow, but uh, three is on the table on the on the table as well. It is from yeah. what Felix sees. And it'll be fun to watch. Okay. It will be. Yeah. So, we got so a that's good view. Alright, look. Nope. Go to the make it. Yep! 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 Hard! 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 Okay. And the double is there, so two go away. BC yeah, still sitting shot rock. Mm. They'll be happy with that, though. Top four. Top four, yeah. Like, the other way curls better, but this is... Like, I think this is a better option. Maybe just a hair more. So it's probably, like... I gotta throw a little bit less than I'm gonna draw. Just make me go do something. Well, well placed rock here could put a lot of pressure on Felix. Line's close. Five. Go. Yep. You can go then. Yep, hard line. Yep, line. Coming down. Yep, gotta go line. Oh, too bad. Unlucky break there for Chris Beyer. Yeah, might have grabbed something. It sure seemed to curl early. Because <laughs> you want to roll and then either give him the freeze or the run. I mean, it's like that, but it's got some separation. Looks like they'll play the hit and roll across the face. It's 10 feet. Do you want to roll nose? Nose, eh? I don't want to roll behind that. There you go. You don't want nose. No, I think you do want nose. Don't want the roll. That's right. You know, if he rolls too far to the wings, of course, then BC will just come in behind. So I think he wants to just sit right there. And I guess if you roll behind the guards, that uh, will be behind the T-line. Yes, it would be. Freeze opportunity for British Columbia. Talk about bloodlines. Felix and Emile's mother, Marie-Claude Esselin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
He is a member of the Canadian Ski Hall of Fame. Freestyle World Cup overall champion in 1981 and 1982. And uh, you knew these two were destined for winter sports. Maybe not the one their mom thought, but uh, one of Canada's most accomplished freestyle skiers in the history of the sport. But there's that scenario we just talked about. Well, you know, for sure. I mean, uh, that's not what he wanted, but um, I mean, Miles still got to make a great shot here, but if he makes it, he's in a good chance to steal. curling to do. Can you get it to curl it all to it? No. It's just not breaking. Might be a little heavy too, I think. Yeah. yeah just never gave it a chance. And this will be a draw. Just touch the eight foot. That will put two on the scoreboard for Team Quebec. Yeah, that one, I think he had the broom in the right place and with uh, sweep and weight. I think that would have broke right in. And I think it's a little slower than that. little heavy. Yeah. Stayed straight. I like the looks of this one, Clint. It's coming right in, right to the forefoot. So it will be a deuce for Quebec. They will take a 6-1 lead into the fourth end break. The teams will take a break. We will too. We'll be back in just a few moments here to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. Saskatchewan is cold. So cold that you'll often hear locals ask each other, is it cold enough for you? The bold and brave, they'll already know the answer to this question. Saskatchewan is cold enough. Cold enough to cover our land with new possibilities. To freeze time and place and create long lasting memories. Cold enough to make us appreciate the warmth of others and bring our communities even closer together. Sure. It can be a bit uncomfortable at times. You're gonna have to do some shoveling, scrape some ice off your windshield, and you're definitely gonna need to wear a toque. But that's all part of the fun. It's about dressing right and preparing for the adventure. So bundle up and embrace the season. Saskatchewan, cold enough. Saskatchewan is cold. So cold that you'll often hear locals ask each other, is it cold enough for you? The bold and brave, they'll already know the answer to this question. Saskatchewan is cold enough. Cold enough to cover our land with new possibilities, to freeze time and place and create long lasting memories. Cold enough to make us appreciate the warmth of others and bring our communities even closer together. Saskatchewan, cold enough.
Welcome back to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center here in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. It is draw seven Tuesday afternoon at the 2022 Canadian Mixed Curling Championship. And we get this fifth end underway with Quebec. Team Felix Asselin from Dollar des Ormeaux, Quebec, the leading 6-1 over the BC team, skipped by Miles Craig, representing Duncan in Victoria, British Columbia. I'm Al Cameron, joined by Clint Thierman. And Clint, as we always like to do, we're going to put you in the position of coach. What might you have told these teams at the fourth end break? Let's start with this BC team. Well, I think what BC has to remember is, yes, they're down 6-1. Um, you know, and coming back against a team like, like Quebec will not be easy. But they haven't played bad. Uh, you know, they were, uh, it's really come down to two draws that Miles had and uh, gave, up, uh, gave up two points in the second and two points here in the fourth. Uh, so it's really, they're playing well. Uh, they just have to keep uh, putting rocks in play, uh, making uh, Quebec make some, uh, some difficult shots. You know, it's a crazy game. Uh, things happen and maybe it'll turn around and they'll get a break or two and get back in this game. Quebec does have a coach, Michel St. George, but if you were Michel, what might you have told this Quebec team at the fourth end break? Well, I think, you know, when, you, when you've got a large lead, sometimes that's difficult because you, uh, you'd really like to keep everything clean and uh, giving yourself a chance to, to hold them to one or, or, or even score. Uh, but you have to remember that it is uh, the five rock rule and there's going to be rocks in play and so you might not be able to keep it as clean as you want and just, uh, you know, just uh, uh, play the shots at uh, the percentage shots and, uh, you know, try to, try to hold them to, to one or two points and uh, then get the hammer back and, and, and try to score from there. So, uh, yeah, they're, it's not always easy uh, when you're in the lead, but I'm sure they'll They'll take a 5-1 or a 6-1 lead instead of being down the other way. <laughs> That's so. true. Well, we saw an example of that uh, on opening day, Clint. Uh, Manitoba had a 7-2 lead on Prince Edward Island in their game. And uh, Prince Edward Island did come all the way back and forced Manitoba to make their last shot in the last end for the victory. And it turned into just a 7-6 win. So you can generate offense with that 5-rock uh, rule. And as we've seen consistently throughout the years since it's been brought in. Well, for sure. I mean, you know, and if, uh, if BC can find a way to, to get, say, three, all of a sudden then that lead that, that Quebec has doesn't seem so onerous and uh, gives, uh, gives them a lot of confidence and makes uh, Quebec kind of start to second guess things a bit. So, But this setup has been consistent, hasn't it, Clint? I mean, uh, BC tries to put the corner guards up and they make it, but it's Quebec with control of that scoring zone of the forefront. I know, they've, uh, they've got, um, you know, the corner guards are good, but, but Quebec is so good at drawing that play to the center. And, you know, we saw on the third, we'd had BC did get a hit and roll and uh, looked like they were going to be able to use that corner guard to generate their two, but Felix just made a great shot and took that away. He just he could see half of it and made that shot. 6-1 lead for Quebec. We'll take a quick look at the other games on the ice here. Nova Scotia, Team Paul Fleming from Halifax has taken a 5-1 lead into the fourth end break. Manitoba takes a single in the fourth end, so Nova Scotia will have Hammer and a four-point lead going into the fifth end. Northwest Territories looking for their third consecutive win. Jamie Cooey's team from Yellowknife up 5-0 now on Prince Edward Island. And Dennis Watts' his team from Summerside. Uh, two in the first for Northwest Territories and then steals of one in the second, third, and fourth end. So it is PEI with Hammer down by five in the fifth end. And in the other game on the ice, it is Saskatchewan. Team Sean Meacham from Swift Current and his team will be the host committee of the 2023 Canadian mix that will take place in Swift Current. It's a 10-1 lead now for Saskatchewan. Four in the first against Team None of It. Peter Mackey's team from McAllowit. One in the second for none of it, and then three and three in the next two ends for Saskatchewan. So it's a 10-1 lead for Saskatchewan, none of it with Hammer in the fifth end. And just a reminder, we'll be back on the air later today, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. It will be the team from the Yukon, Terry Miller's team from Whitehorse, taking on Team Grant Odishaw from Moncton, New Brunswick. That will be our feature game tonight at the 2022 Canadian Mixed. I'm Al Cameron, joined, as noted, by...
Clint Thurman for this afternoon's game, and it is Quebec sitting a whole pile. <laughs> Well, they have, but, uh, you know, the center isn't jammed up, and the, the play is to the corners a bit, assuming BC will make oh, this, yep. uh, and maybe roll away or yep. get the double. So, uh, yeah, it, the play is away from the center a bit, so I think it's whoa, BC's uh, got to be happy with that. You want to know it again? Can we just know it again? Yeah, they got the best. The big kid out the whole bar. Half four, who knows? Oh, it's awful. Like those two rocks are over that. It's good for them anymore. Drawing around. She knows he's drawing around it. Laurie St. George. Being asked to make the open hit. Just look at the way that Emil Aslan is leaning into that. Just textbook sweeping. going to roll a little bit. Well, there's a... It's hooked That's there fine. a bit, so... There is an opportunity to get behind that. Steph jackson Bear. She was around great curling all of her life. Mentioned her mother and uh, can't say enough good things about what Elaine Dag Jackson has done for women's curling in this country. Involved with so many great high profile teams over the years and Steph was able to uh, be exposed to most of those. Great players, Georgina Wheatcroft, Julie Skinner, Kelly Law, Melissa Saligo. And Melissa does uh, wonderful work with Curl BC as well. And Jock Tyre, manager of the Kelowna Curling Club, and Jackson family has a great deal to do with those highly successful four-foot curling camps that are run in BC every year. Turned out so many wonderful young players over the years. Well, there's been a lot of, a lot of curlers that give a lot back. You know, they always want to grow the game, and uh, you grow it right from the ground up. So. Uh, you mentioned Julie Skinner, uh, if you're aware, but we hosted the 1987 juniors here, and Julie Skinner was here then, and Wayne Madaw, and some of those no names that are still around today. But. I believe that was the first year that the juniors were combined into a men's and women's it event. Was they were uh, first year. Yeah. They ran separately up yeah. until then. Yeah. That was a big event. I think we had uh, all 10. Ten sheets going, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a big week. So. Looks like Quebec will take a timeout and discuss their options here. Yeah, that was a great draw that uh, BC made there, and Quebec's got some decisions to make. I mean, I know he's trying to do Same problem. What, or, or we add another rock and we hope that they give us a double one. Through the rock. Should you back in or not? Should you back in or not? Just straight freeze on the nose would be good. I don't mind. I kind of like chasing yeah, this with peel, and if yeah. I if I put this while I put okay, this. Okay, but we gotta be real tight. Yeah, we'll pass right. Yeah. Wait. All right. Yeah. Si je lance peel, je pense que ça s'en va tout le temps. Okay. Si tu veux ça faire avec out turn, pour plus de. I don't mind it. Plus de spin. I really don't mind it. Up to you. I don't mind. So what are the thoughts here, Clint? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. I think they want to deal with it and they're looking at what turn to take. But I thought the two options they were discussing were either freezing on it or chasing it and ripping it out. And they don't mind if they lose that. No, the back if they lose yeah. it, that's fine. They just want to jam it. That, uh, I think that's what they're worried about and what's the best turn to use to avoid the jam. I think I heard them settle on the counterclockwise rotation and throw it really hard. Really and Lori can throw it hard. And then there'll be lots of spin. And Anywhere on the inside. Whoa. 
See that arm extension that is uh, right. so common among young oh. players now. It's going to have to curl a little, though. Oh. Still an opportunity here for BC oh. to generate two, if not three. Three is in play here three with that is double in, corner. Three is in play, yeah. Uh, the opportunity here for Steph to get one. I think the split was almost the call here. Rub off their own and get one buried behind them, if not straight draw. Straight draw. Well, she okay. made a great shot with her first one. So. Carly, Carly, Carly. That's going to have to move, though. Uh, it's not tapping it moves. Nope, nope. Okay, it as far as uh, you sit right on top of it. It's not terrible. Okay. But it is wide open, and Felix definitely has a chance to play the uh, yeah, double. We had the most of it. Felix! Yeah, there's no hesitation in this call. Mentioned Jean-Michel Menard winning the World Mixed Championship uh, last month over in Aberdeen. Jean-Michel is uh, a mentor to Felix Asselin's men's team that is... Uh, Probably the favorite to win the Quebec men's title and earn a trip to the 2023-2022 Tim Hortons Briar. No, 2023 Tim Hortons Briar in London, Ontario. Yeah. Get my years mixed up here. <laughs> well, BC got the jam there, so. You really can't play the hit and, and roll in behind. They're the jam, so. Right? As long as you're on this side, he doesn't have a double. And if we're really good on it, then like to slam it out is a little tougher because this is kind of a catcher. Like it won't, yeah, right on the center line. That seems pretty good, eh? Freeze like an inch on the center line side, basically. Yeah. We have to be on the center line side. Yeah. Like even if we tap it. It looks like he's choosing to draw to the uh, to one in the eighth foot. Ready to corner a bit. Chris, Line, really. Line. Line's really close, hard. Chris, stay on the inside. Line's pretty good. Hard line. Trying to hold the line. Hey, Trying to go. Hard. 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 Keep it on hard. that side. Go, go, go. Coming down. Oh. That's going to come up a little light. It still will be BC shot rock. But uh, exposed enough, I think, that Felix will take it on. Yeah, I think he'll be trying to remove it because there is a double there. So just the short raise? Yeah, the short raise, yes. There's a lot of risk in this shot, though. Neil leaning into this, seeing if he can keep it on line. And it does over curl a bit. Well, that's a draw for two, or 
I suppose you could take on the double for three. That would be a tough one, but it would be fun to watch, <laughs> wouldn't it? But I think uh, I think Chris will take on the clockwise rotation draw to the four. four. Just touch the four, and that'll get him two. Yeah, good I way to come out of the break. This is exactly exactly what he wanted. Like we think the speed here would probably be the same. Okay. The only southpaw in today's game, so he's throwing his out turn. Line's good. Clockwise rotation. Line's good. Chris, stay on the inside. Just put it on the tee. You're good. Whoa, well, needs to curl. Needs to curl. Carly, Carly. Curl, curl. Carly. You got to get this to move a bit. It's going to touch the road. No, of course not. It's going to stop. Well, it stopped. That's it did. Good two points. These rocks take forever to <laughs> curl, but when they do, they do finish nice, and it will be a deuce for British Columbia. And it will be Quebec in a 6-3 lead with Last Rock when we come back for the sixth end just after this. the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. We go into the sixth end of today's feature game between British Columbia and Quebec. Quebec with a 6-3 lead, but BC may be sparking a little bit of momentum with a deuce in the fifth end coming out of that fourth end break, so we'll see what they can do with it. Just a reminder, we were, in addition to tonight's feature game, we'll be back on the air three times on Wednesday on Curling Canada's YouTube channel. 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern, we'll have the Northwest Territories, skipped by Jamie Cooley from Yellowknife, and Team Ontario, Scott McDonald's team from St. Thomas. They will go at 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern. Then at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern, it will be Dennis Watts' team from Summerside, Prince Edward Island, taking on Newfoundland Labrador. And the young team from Stephenville and St. John's, that will be at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. And then we'll wrap it up tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. Saskatchewan, Team Sean Meacham taking on this BC team that we're watching right now, skipped by Miles Craig. Three games tomorrow, and of course we'll be broadcasting through to the completion of the 2022 Canadian Mixed. Gold medal game, right through to the gold medal game. That'll be Saturday, 2.30 Central, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, and that's when we'll decide a Canadian team that will represent us at the 2023 World Mixed Curling Championship next October. I don't know where it'll be. Waiting for that announcement from the World Curling Federation, but uh, we will know who's going to be playing for us next fall. Well, Al, that was, uh, that was a big two points. Uh, that shrunk that scoreboard quite a bit. And you want to put some pressure on and get a steal on, on six, and the game is on. Well, two shots that have slid behind the tee line, and that's not been the norm for Emily Riley, who's had a superb game here, but that's certainly an advantage for BC with the two center guards that are up there and two rocks behind the tee line. Let's see what Chris Beyer can do with them. T line. Line's good. Okay. Room right now. 
Okay, well, it's going to break well, late, I think. Right no, a little yeah. heavy. You need to slow down as much as you can. Okay. 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 Over? Oh, yeah, over the top. No. And Felix is not going to mess with those guards up there. He wants them to go away in an awful hurry. Curled up a little too much to get that over the top double, so one stays in place. <laughs> Advantage BC for the moment. Straight freeze on the nose of the yellow. Yeah, sometimes those double peels look really, really easy, but they're not. <laughs> Even single peels look really <laughs> hard, let me tell you. T line if you can. Line's okay. Line's good. See if Chris was able to get that draw weight down after being a little heavy on his first one. Gotta get him as far as can. Gonna double Trying to get it onto the rings and prevent the double peel, but it'll come up a little short. Same shot. Yeah. Yeah, you can even get this. Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's a small half. Even a third. Okay. You heard the call. Give her another go. Yep. Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's got him this time. That'll work. A guy right in the middle of these two. Like right here. Beck does have shot rock behind the tee. First and third, and it is BC sitting second shot. And trying to manufacture a steal here to creep a little closer. Rocks and time are running out, though. Yeah. Well, this guard doesn't have to be perfect, but it'll keep B, uh, Quebec busy up there anyway. And, and maybe when it comes down to the it's end, you'll stop. have a chance for a freeze. But. Oh, this one's way you can just out there. Leave it as high as you can. <laughs> well, it's not gonna. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I guess so. Yep, 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 yep. Well, it's been a little bit of a theme here too. That uh, BC is uh, not really giving tons of rocks to their sweepers here either. No, they're not. That's right. I mean, I guess we could do that. The second they play on this, we got a double. Just play that. Okay. Control. Tell what else, guys. Might be coming right back in. No, 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 no. And, and, yep. Hard. Ooh. That is a straight spot there. You want the same turn? Or do you want to go this way? Same turn. Okay. Okay. So it is BC sitting two. The good thing from BC's perspective, no guards up front, so it's uh, he will have an open draw if it comes to that. Yeah. Felix on his last, but BC two will keep trying to ramp up the pressure and make the shot tougher. Could curl a little. Yeah, there's still quite a bit of that forefoot that's available right yep. now for yep. Felix. Yep. But. yep. Yep. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's good. Whoa. Nice shot. Yeah. 
Right up the yep. right up the stick this time. I don't think I can get mine to go as straight as Steph. I don't really want to go but like, a, like six inches, eight inches wider and get into a different speed or something. <laughs> It's the same shot. Other turns. <laughs> what, leave another guard will be thrown here? Maybe just a sliver more. Okay. Right where Steph had her is like four feet outside the ring. Perfect. Clean it to stop. Over and off. Yeah. Where are you? Over and off. Time to change Clean it to stop. Oh, get the job done. Dead buried, as you can see there. So Felix will. I'm not sure if he's playing the straight peel or if he's attempting the run back here. Uh, I think straight peel. Yeah, I think he's got it in his mind, straight peel, and uh, draw the forefoot the next one. So. Made the peel. Clint, we do have one final to report. Saskatchewan stealing one in the sixth end and they will finish off a 12-1 win over Nunavut. That gets Saskatchewan to three and one here in the Canadian mixed. Yeah, they're a strong team and uh, to go up four nothing after one, it's it's uh, it's a tough road back. And we can also tell you, over on sheet D, we talked about Nova Scotia jumping out into a five nothing lead, and, there's four. and they, now we can tell you that it is a tie game. So here's a perfect example of what we were just talking about: Manitoba taking one in the fourth end to go down five one, and then stealing four in the fifth. And it is a tie game, Nova Scotia with Last Rock now in the sixth in what has become a very tight game, but sure didn't look that way early. No, it didn't. And I didn't see how that four came about, but uh, obviously they put some pressure on and things happen. Four's good. Five. Line's good. Five. In the other game, Northwest Line's Territories, good. Jamie Cooey's team Leading 5-2 now, Prince Edward Island taking a deuce in the fifth end, but uh, the Territories do have Last Rock in the sixth and a three-point lead. Same situation that we have here on our featured sheet, and it will be Felix Asselin looking at two British Columbia counters and needing to get full four to score his point here in the sixth. So mission accomplished if you're BC, get the four. Oh, exactly, yeah. And here's where that uh, Quebec sweeping really will come in to play. Last shot, sixth end, Felix Asselin, draw for one. Lines are very tight. Emily and Emil believe this has got to go, but now they'll let up a bit. I think it looks pretty good. Look there. I got 14-1, look there. Look there, guys. Oh, it's good. 
just like that. A tremendous draw, you know. That's why he gets the big bucks. <laughs> He does indeed, and that will be a score of one for Quebec. So they will take a 7-3 lead into the seventh end. When we come back right after this. Saskatchewan is cold. So cold that you'll often hear locals ask each other, is it cold enough for you? The bold and brave, they'll already know the answer to this question. Saskatchewan is cold enough. Cold enough to cover our land with new possibilities. To freeze time and place and create long-lasting memories. Cold enough to make us appreciate the warmth of others and bring our communities even closer together. Saskatchewan. Cold enough. Welcome back to the Prince Albert Golf and Curling Center. It is the seventh end of our feature game this afternoon between BC, Team Miles Craig from the Duncan and Victoria Curling Clubs and Team Quebec, Team Felix Esselin from the Glenmore Club in Dollar des Ormeaux, which is a suburb of Montreal. And we'll give you a quick score update. We just saw Prince Edward Island fighting back even harder now. They took two in the fifth. They've just stolen two in the sixth end, and now it is a 5-4 lead for the Northwest Territories, skipped by Jamie Cooey as they go into the seventh end. So should be a couple good finishes on those sheets, and maybe we're in for one on our sheet as well as British Columbia gets a deuce in the fifth, forces Quebec to take one in the sixth, but they got to get this across for a corner. It's over. But Good. That'll play. And you know, you look back at that last end, Clint, and it was uh, Quebec got in trouble early in that end when they had two rocks behind the tee line. And uh, Emily Riley now has already corrected that issue. She put one right on the top right button on. yeah, and looking to put another one in there just on top of it. <coughs> Yeah, rock positioning is, is huge. It can dictate the end, and uh, they really just slipped a little too far back, and it opened the door for, for BC, and Felix had to make a good shot. That one comes up a little light. They wanted that one top eight. Yeah, they didn't need that out there. Rocks and play up front will definitely favor British Columbia as they try and manufacture a deuce here, if not more. Line's good. Line's good. Close. Yep. 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 Oh, you're good line. You're good line. You're good line. Two's good. Two's good. Nice shot. Double corners put up there by yeah, Carly shots. Sand with Craig. Top eight? Yeah, top eight. Okay. Maybe that's it. Try and uh, put one top eight was the call. Okay, mine's good. A little tight. Tight. Yep. Hard line. Hard. Okay, switch, switch. Curl, curl. Yep. I think he's by. Great top eight. Come on, guys. Well, it's just what he ordered. Great sweep. Okay. Huh? Top four? Top 12. This Quebec team did have uh, a great run at the 2019 Canadian Mixed. He won a bronze medal that year at uh, the Fort Rouge in Winnipeg. Same lineup that played in 2019. They had uh, an 8-2 record, which is the best after yep. the championship pool. Yep. Would lose the semifinal Whoa. that year to Whoa. Nova Scotia. Whoa, then come back and defeat yep. Wayne Tuck and Team Ontario 7-6 in an extra end in the bronze medal game. Of course, the team that won that Canadian Mixed Championship, Colin Kurz and his team from Manitoba, went on to win 
a gold medal for Canada at the World Mixed, and hmm, that was the second in succession for Canada. Mike, Ta Mike Anderson had won in 2018, Colin Curry's 2019, and then uh, after a couple of cancellations related to COVID, Jean-Michel Menard made it three in a row for Canada last month in Aberdeen, so having great success at the world level in the mixed. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Yep. And you know, it's this yep. field here, yeah. there's quite a few uh, young teams, so they'll be strong for years to come. Trying to roll that in. Oh, very nice. Ooh, very nice. Great roll there by Emil. Yeah, I'm fine if you uh, rub this and... Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, okay. Maybe like a little bit more than back line. Pack's probably good. If you just push these both out of the forefoot here and here. Pack? Yeah. Like three quarters, stick three quarters. You like that? Well, rocks and play are BC's friend, but uh, looking at it right now, <laughs> it doesn't really look that Those way. Those don't it? look all that friendly from my perspective. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> But if they can uh, punch a few of those back behind the tee line, that's the reason they're not pulling big weight at this, obviously, because they'd like those rocks in play just a little further back in the house. For sure, yeah. Now you got two behind the tee line. Excellent shot, yeah. I think Felix is going to have to hit. Oui, t'avais l'air de neuf cinq. T'as vu ce glace là? Hein? T'as vu ce glace là? Yeah. Yeah. Laurie Saint George. Take on the hit. Hold, hold. Hold. Why the spin? Yep. Yep. Just hold, hold. Yeah, they'll hold that. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, what a great shot. What a super <laughs> curling shot. <laughs> Let's watch that roll again. Probably almost the same shot. Great line call, too, by Felix. Oh, perfect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's that smile that Canadian curling fans love to see so much. Yeah. Try and hit as much as you can and just and the old put fist one pump. yellow here and one here. She does know how to have fun out there. So. Yes. Go, 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 go. Steph Jackson Byer Close. now. Close. They can yep. punch another one behind the tee line, which you're trying here. Again, that whoa, uh, whoa, becomes whoa. a wall and it becomes whoa, tougher to whoa, move them out. Yeah. Okay. Maybe just a little too much weight here. Didn't curl up. Can't block off everything. No, gonna leave a shot either way. Too much weight? No, no, no. Yeah, a little outside, maybe too. Yeah, she, she was full, and just that little bit extra weight. And well, there's an opening. 
he goes there. Put one there, it's going to be tough to remove. But at the same time, you still wonder how does BC get two out of this? <laughs> yeah. You like that? All the Quebec rocks in play. Five of them sitting shot right now. It is British Columbia with last rock here in the seventh end. Down 7 3. Low right now, then. Stay close, though. Curl. Is it coming down? If it's, coming, if it's close to T, then. Curl, 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 curl. curl. Trying to see if they can get this inside just a bit, but it will not. No, it's third shot. It'll be pretty wide open. Yeah, that's a sensitive spot there. Just a little extra weight and it hangs straight. I think BC's has got to hope for a bit of a, a jam there. But. Quick update on that Manitoba Nova Scotia game. Manitoba has stolen another point and they have taken a 6 5 lead after trailing 5 0 after three ends. So that game has turned around in an awful hurry. Nova Scotia will have Last Rock playing the seventh end. Alex Aslan, his first shot of the seventh end. Didn't get the roll, but still sitting five. Yeah, that was that was a great shot. This great weight control. Well, we want to leave these yellows back here, or else he just picks it. We got to get through the hole, yeah. So I think like we probably have to throw like back line to get through the hole. But we definitely want these yellows. Quebec has won the Canadian Mixed Championship three times. First in 2001, Jean Michel Menard. Of course, he won again in 2021. And in 2020, on home ice in Saguenay, it was Jean Sebastian Waugh's team winning. Like, I don't know if the hole's there with draw right? Mentioned the lengthy dry spell for British Columbia. Going back to 1985, Steve Skilling's team winning. Prior to that, they also won a 1982 team skipped by Glenn Pierce. 1976, a team skipped by Tony Eberts. 1972, Trev Fisher skipped, and that was BC's first win at the Canadian Mixed. Yeah, I recognize some of those names, but you're right, that's a, that's a long drought for BC, and, and uh, BC is a, a fairly strong province for curling. It's surprising. In a lot of places, this hole isn't here, but it, it, this hole is definitely here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so back to off. So probably like Miles Craig will come through that hole, and I think they're just going to try and get across the face, and yeah. or just bump it a little bit and sit frozen on it. You know, he, he he has to have a little bit of weight to get through there. But back twelve, I think, uh, is what I heard. Yeah. So. and Carly okay. working hard to keep this straight hard. by that box guard. Hard. 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 Oh, it just rubs. Oh, <laughs> that was tough break. so close to being so good. Boy, they were close. Just a bare tick on that one. And it will be Quebec sitting three in the forefoot. 
Mettons, on garde le trou. Start the hole. I don't know what they do. There you, you, you heard Felix. Yeah, he, he doesn't have to hit the I can't wait to see that. <laughs> I'll tighten up the broom a bit, but close the hole. And um, not sure what Chris will have or Miles will have on his last yeah, shot. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's much. Okay, it's Amber Lee. Hard early. Amber Lee. Hard. You gotta go. You know, that's going to maybe over curl. Over enough. 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 I think it did the job. <laughs> really, nothing to run in. Yeah, that even... Think a rock fits well, through there? I only wonder if the red on red, red yeah. double run in. That's, yeah. that's about it. To angle it in and yes, those friendly rocks just got very unfriendly. We'll talk it out. We'll listen in. Does the yellow triple? Does the red jam on that other yellow? You think? Cause that yellow probably spins under, like hits it and spins under. Probably not. It's like not gonna dead yet. Wait, somewhere over here. Yeah. It's that or the double red, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we probably throw this turn too. Okay, yeah, I'll play the whole with like four. Uh, it doesn't really curl with anything more than draw weight. <laughs> Well, here we go. Game's on the line, I'd have to think here. Yeah, yeah this is it. There's not much room between those two yellow stones, but... <laughs> if there's room for a rock, that's about it. already on the guard and that right. will be a steal of three for Quebec and that will be handshakes. So it will be a 10-3 victory for Quebec's Felix Asseland and we can tell you that will clinch a spot in the championship pool for Team Quebec. So they will be playing in the next phase of this championship, the championship pool. A reminder, we'll be right, we'll be back tonight, 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Eastern for tonight's feature game between the Yukon and New Brunswick. So, for color commentator Clint Thierman, I'm Al Cameron saying so long from Prince Albert. <laughs>